Hello and welcome back to the Level Up English podcast. My name is Michael, as some of you know, but if this is your first time, then welcome. This is a nice time to join, if so, because I'm talking today with a guest. I'm talking with Paul from the podcast English Podcast with Paul. Paul reached out to me via email and I'm really glad he did because he has a really interesting story and I kind of felt as though we could have spoken for many, many hours on this topic. So I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. Paul has his own podcast for English learners, which you can find on YouTube or you could also go to englishpodcastwithpaul.com and I will make sure to put links to everything in the show notes if you want to make it easier and just click there and have a look. But also that is only half of what Paul is doing. He has another side of his life and his work perhaps, which is on his website, secondclasshobos.com. Secondclasshobos.com. And this is where he and his wife, Sue, basically travel around the world and have a digital nomad lifestyle. We talk more about this in the episode. I'm really interested in this topic. I suppose I could explain now, just to make it clear, digital nomad. So digital means that you're working online in a digital space. Nomad is a noun and it's describing someone who moves from place to place. They do not have one fixed location. So a digital nomad is a fairly new idea and it's someone who works on their laptop, on their computer, and moves around the world traveling. And that is the lifestyle that Paul and Sue are living or have lived, and they have a lot of stories around that as well. We also talk in this episode quite a bit about that topic and van life as well. Van life is when you're living inside your van. A van is like a big car, a big vehicle. So Paul and Sue have also had some experience in van life, They've had many vans, from what I could hear, and they've travelled around Europe and England in their vans, which is something that I'm really interested in doing, and I hope to do that in the future as well. So I will be coming to Paul for tips at some point. We also talk a little bit about house sitting, house sitting, which is something that Paul has done a lot of and I have done quite a lot of as well, which is kind of looking after houses like babysitting, but for a house instead of a baby. So lots of topics today, and we use lots of interesting expressions. So if you're somewhat interested in this area, then I'm sure you will learn a lot, not only from Paul's story, but also from the words and phrases that we're using. I should also say that Paul is from Somerset, which is not far from my home county of Cornwall in the UK. So I wonder if you will hear any similarities in our accents. You know, they're not quite the same, but you might hear some things that are similar because our hometowns are not very far away from each other. But as always, if you do have any problems understanding or keeping up with the pace of the conversation, then the transcripts might be helpful for you. The transcripts are like subtitles for the episode. You can listen and read at the same time. It's really, really useful for practicing your English skills and learning more. You can even search for vocabulary. So if I mention a word in the podcast and you forget when I mentioned it, you can just type in the word and it will find the word in the whole episode and you can see it in context. So that's a really useful feature of the transcripts as well. If that sounds interesting, you can become a member at levelupenglish.school. That is my website. There's a members button at the top. Or as always, I will put a link in the podcast description on your phone where you can click directly and sign up there or at least find out more information. But anyway, I will stop talking and I will get into the podcast now with Paul. I hope you enjoy it. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the podcast. I am excited to be joined today by Paul, who is going to introduce himself now. So welcome, Paul. Can you tell us a bit about yourself and what you do and yeah, your website as well? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, as you said, my name's Paul. I've been trying to become a digital nomad for the last sort of few years. And part of that was because I felt like very trapped when I worked for an employer. And as I really liked traveling and, and getting out and about and, and, and enjoying my life, 
I felt that working or traveling seemed to be the, 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 the dichotomy. It's either one or the other. So I really tried to find a way to be a digital nomad. And, and so that's what my wife and I did. We, we, we got some qualifications in teaching. Uh, we, we, we'd been abroad a few times. Um, and we kind of, I don't want to say we fell into it because we, we did purposely look to, to do teaching whilst abroad. Um, and I don't want to go into too much detail now, but basically we started off teaching and we taught in a few schools in, in a few different countries. And then we decided that if we were going to move around, we needed to be location independent. And so that's how we came to work online and teaching online. There was a few other things we do as well. Uh, and I'll come over those in, in, uh, in, in the uh, interview. I'll tell you a bit more about it. So, so that's me really. And, and now I have a podcast to, to help my students and so they can get more from me than, than just in the lesson. Uh, and the podcast is English Podcast with Paul. Uh, also the same with the website, which I'm currently developing. It's, it's still in very early stages, um, fledgling mm. stages. Alongside that, we're trying to, to build up another website uh, for, for people that want to be digital nomads by trying out new websites and platforms and, and ways to keep ourselves um, with financially afloat and, and interested in moving around a little bit. So, yeah, we can cover some of those as well in a moment. So, yeah, that's me, Paul and Sue. We're, uh, yeah, we're, Sue is just over 50 and I'm just under 50. So we're around our 50s. And, yeah, we, we like traveling and moving about. But, uh, yeah, I'll get into more detail in a moment. So, mm. yeah, thank you for inviting me on. Yeah, my pleasure. It's exciting. I mean, I, I, hopefully we can talk more about that today. There's a lot of good phrases that you've brought up like digital nomad uh nomad is someone who wanders around without one fixed home right um you mentioned location independent uh which is like you don't have to be in one place you can go different places maybe because you have a flexible job that's a, that's a good term as well um and yeah maybe you could tell i hesitated when i when i introduced you because i know you've got two kind of projects going on now right you've got the uh the english podcast side the english teaching side and then you've got uh the hobo side right second class hobos yeah um, second class so they complement one another because they, they started <laughs> together and they complement one another but for for originally for work it, it was focusing on english and and helping my students giving them more but we also realized that we, we prefer to move around because teaching, teaching doesn't often pay a huge amount of money and it's more of a passion kind of um, career. So, so we felt that we, we had to bring in more finances to, to help us live that life of, of traveling and enjoying our time and being free. So that's where the, the digital nomad part come in and, and where we did other things and we still do other things to complement the teaching English. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. I, I like it. It's, it's exciting. You're back in the UK now, I'm guessing? Yeah, we've been back about three it's months now yeah. in the UK. Previous to that, we okay. were out in Cambodia for a year, uh, just over a year. Wow. Um, before that, we were in the UK for a little bit, saved up some money. And obviously, we all know about Brexit and the pandemic. Uh, and part prior to that, we were living in Spain for, for about a year and teaching English in Spain. And then before that, again, we lived in Cambodia, in another part of Cambodia for almost a year. And then before that, we were in Vietnam for a, a few months. So yeah, it's, it's developed a little bit. So we've, like I said, really enjoyed the traveling and moving around, but to, to finance mm -hmm. it and, and to keep us, you know, um, connected with, with some kind of work, we've, we've had to wear both hats at the same time. When you say both hats, you mean there's like a, the working hat and the, the traveling hat. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah. So like I said, working with, with, uh, teaching online. 
and then the traveling hat of of using other apps and and being a bit more nomadic and uh, and, and finding ways to to support ourselves. Yeah, yeah. And I guess the the only tricky thing is that finding that internet connection, which, which I imagine can be tough sometimes. But yeah, I, I've been there as well. But I mean, it, it sounds quite similar to to some things I've been through, which which is interesting. Um, one thing that I always have a hard time with is like choosing where to go. You know, it's a very big world oh, and every country okay. has got something nice about it. But oh. what, do, do you have that problem? Like, do you, what, what no, made you choose no, no. Cambodia? It's and, like and a list of places I'd love to go. Uh, the, the list is hmm. so long, but uh, you, you just start somewhere. And also what really helped was one, Cambodia was hot compared to the winters <laughs> in the UK. And the other, that Cambodia was very, very cheap. And so yeah. it was like... I was going to say, yeah. the price must have something to do with it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So tell me about you. Where did you, uh, where did you travel then? I, I've had like periods of digital nomadism where I've had like a few months at a time where I've been traveling. And then I've gone back to the UK for some time to, to get a bit more stable. So mm. I don't know if that's a bit like you, like a little bit, you know, back and forth. Um, the first big session I did a few years ago was like, ah, where did, it's even getting, uh, foggy in my head now, but usually it's around Asia, a little bit like you. So I did some weeks in Japan, uh, Thailand, uh, yeah, similar to you, Thailand, Vietnam, Indonesia, places like that. Then, uh, right, no, it was last year. Wow. It feels so long ago. Last year, I did another one where I went uh, not to Asia because the pandemic was still a bit uh, a bit tricky, but I did uh, some in like Georgia, Albania, um, went to wow. the US as well for a few weeks. So I was all over the world on that one. Um, and then right now wow. I'm in Thailand. So I'm living here now. So it's a, it's a more permanent thing. I did wonder about the time gap. I think I saw on your calendar the time was different. And I was like, ah, that's why. Okay. Yeah, I so think that's I was, why it's quite early for you in the morning, but not so much for me. <laughs> all right. Okay. So, okay. If um, one of the differences, and, and I, I, I guess it's the same for you, but one of the differences between my wife and I and many other people we know is that we don't have a house. Well, we've been mm. we've been in renting for for a little bit. We've had an apartment here, an apartment, there, but we don't own a house, so we don't have that bricks and mortar tying us down to the uk all the time and mm -hmm. that you know what it's like when, when you you got the bad weather and you've got these these bills coming in for a council tax on water rates and gas and electric and you're working harder and it gets very very frustrating that you feel like you you can't live your life and go and do the things you want to do and some people might say well but that's a privilege of those that have you know retired and I don't want to be retired before I can travel. I want to. I want to travel now, because we all know that you know life is precious and 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 can be taken away at any moment. Um, so for us, it was it was a no brainer. We 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 thought, well, if we go somewhere, we we don't have to worry uh, about a house. We just come back and uh, maybe stay with a family member for for a few days, and then buy uh, and this is what we have done we buy a, a van you know a commercial van and we we rip out the seats and we put in some insulation and make a vapor barrier and then and then we build like a bed frame and, and a, like a little kitchen unit um and that's about it there's there's not a lot more to it than that so i i've had now i don't know five different camper vans that i've lived mm -hmm. in Sometimes, so like the last time, Sue and I worked really hard uh, for employers and we lived in the van at the same time. So we were going off to do laundry at the laundrette. We were um, getting our shopping and coming back to our vehicles. And we both lived in vehicles for a whole year. And that was a testing time just to save up to go <laughs> traveling again. So you know, you, 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 it's it's a roller coaster. You you put up with the hard times so you can save to go off and have a great time. And we wanted to keep yeah. that going. We didn't want to have to keep coming back and and worrying about a house. 
So having no apartment, no house, no bricks, no mortgage was really, really instrumental in us having uh, uh, that time to, to go off and, and do things and, and teach, basically. So, yeah, mm. that, that was a big that, positive for us. That. Yeah, sure. I mean, that, that's super exciting for me because it's, it's kind of my plan in the future, too. Um, right before I came here in the UK, I rented a van just for the weekend, a, a camper van, and just kind of like, you know, see if I liked it and, and slept in it for two nights. Um, really enjoyed it. It was really, really fun. And my plan yeah. when I come back to the UK eventually is to get a van and, and do something very similar. So maybe, maybe I'll be uh, hitting you up for some yeah some advice do, on that do. at some point <laughs> on on the website we got lots of information about living in a van some articles um and, mm -hmm. and like you were saying going back to the uk it's a little bit taboo living in a van in the uk it, it's a little bit frowned upon and sometimes you can get some negative feedback and feelings from from local people whereas in europe it, it was it was embraced there was lots of parking mm. available there was free water free internet you, you could get a book called um airs yeah airs for spain and portugal uh, and very similar for france uh and the facilities they offer was brilliant absolutely brilliant so we we, we didn't even pay yeah. at all tell, no tell a lie i paid once in amsterdam because i you're not supposed to um, I don't think you're supposed to wild camp in, in the Netherlands. So when we were in Amsterdam, we went to a campsite. But other than that, we, we mm -hmm. stayed in the van the whole time. We, we, so this is what we did at the beginning we, when we met each other. We, we got a commercial van, ripped it out, and I had no clue what I was doing. It was just a, the university of YouTube. And so we, <laughs> we ripped it out, and, and we put all this insulation in, and, and we didn't know what a vapor barrier was. We didn't know about electrics. We, we didn't know about what cooking to do. So we learned all this from YouTube, and, and we just built it in, in like three weeks. And then we went off. We wow. just got on the ferry, and we went around um, uh, Europe. Now we've covered about 10 countries and probably about 40 to 50 um, towns and cities throughout. Uh, we had a great time and, and something we want to go back to do again. But, uh, but, mm -hmm. but two people living in a van does build up some, some tension over time, as you can imagine. So, so it, it was also a yeah. good time to finish when we did. So, yeah, living in a van <laughs> is a, a really good way to save money and travel. Mm, yeah, as you said, it does depend on the country. Um, I know the UK, it's not. It's not that easy because like every they don't allow like overnight stays in most places. It's it's quite tough with, yeah. in that respect. And I imagine, uh, you know, we've got a lot of listeners in Asia, for example. I, I don't think you said you've done it in Asia, but I imagine it's, it's not really part of the culture in Asia to get in a camper van and and do that. But I'm sure it's still possible in 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 many places though. Just a bit harder. Yeah, yeah. We did see a camper van in in Asia, but a, a lot of the time it's too mm. hot. And as, as you can predict oh, the yeah. rains a lot of the time, that, then you can find shelter relatively easily. We, we've seen a lot of people that were, I don't want to say homeless, but temporary shelters. And I thought, it's not a problem because it's not cold compared to the UK. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, that makes yeah, a big definitely. difference. Yeah. yeah. I'm curious what your maybe highlights and your your kind of low points were in van life you know it's often called van life on instagram right like hashtag van life what were your what were your your best and your worst times if if you can remember okay so i think starting with the worst times would be we we had one bad experience and that was in the uk in my home county of somerset uh, and that was just a drunk woman kicking the door at, at 3 a.m saying that you're um mm. you're scrounging off this day you're this you're that and and she was obviously very drunk on her own and not wearing a lot of clothes must have come back from a nightclub uh and we just sort of shut the door and drove off so we had a, a gap through to the front and we just drove off the only other knock on the door as you might say because it's it's talked about the dreaded knock on the door the only other one was about 10 o'clock in the morning in Spain at a, a mirador, at a, a viewpoint where like a park ranger says, you can't stay here. And we said, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. 
So we just drove off again there within 10 minutes. No, no fine, no negativity, just very uh, positive and, um, mm. you know, pretty good English. So that and the occasional heated moments living in, in a combined space is really the only negativity we had. We, we had so many great times, yes. met lots of people. I, I would do it again in a heartbeat. It, it was just, I don't know, too many to name good times. You know, like, like going to uh, museums in, in Germany and, and seeing some of the things that we've not seen before in the museums and the art galleries. Going on the U-Bahn and being around Berlin and seeing the wall and seeing things like that. We, we went to... Uh, we went to like, um, I can't remember, I think it might have been Bad Nendorf, but in, in Germany, very close to the Black Forest. I have to be careful. I always say Black Forest Gatto, but very near the Black Forest. And we went in this cable car. I think it was like November, so it was chilly and, and a bit cold, but, but it dry. We went up this cable car for ages and ages and ages. And it was like the scene of, of a, a James Bond film. And uh, we just went mm. up and up and up in this cable car. We got to the top of the mountain and there was snow everywhere. And then there was a big viewpoint. And then there was a restaurant. And we thought, oh, gosh, we can't afford to eat in this place. So, so we just ordered like a, I think I ordered a hot chocolate and a cup of tea, something like that. And, and the guy, the waiters that come over, he was saying, oh, English people, Man United, I love football. And he was really <laughs> passionate, excited to see us. So we're like, oh my goodness, we're at the top of this mountain in Germany. And this guy is so happy to see us and talk to us about football. And he wanted to come to the UK to, to study at a university. So, wow, that's, that's really quite surprising. So that was just Germany. Germany was brilliant, just really efficient. And then Spain was just, again, very warming, very different culture. Uh, we had an apartment in Spain for, for a while and just like the, the things that the government put up or, or rather the local council, they, they had in the local park, they had like a fireworks night. Uh, and there was just like, I don't know, a few hundred people come out and, and it was free. You just walked in and it was like nine o'clock at night and it was brilliant. There, there wasn't all this warnings and notices and policemen wandering around. It, it was just so relaxed and calm and, and, and fun. So, yeah, mm -hmm. there were just so many to mention. It was brilliant. Can't That's say any more than I, that. I imagine you've seen, yeah, I imagine you've seen so many places that you, you would never have seen otherwise just because of the, the freedom you had of traveling around. I was just going to interject and say that, that some of the places are not always the best places. So a couple of times <laughs> we slept in park and rides just in a car park. But on the flip side to that, we did get invited to beaches. We spent a lot of time at beaches. And there was one in, in Spain in the south called um, the Pig Field, uh, just in, in Tarifa, just beside Tarifa. And there was parties going on there. We got stuck in the mud and, and things like this. So you do get to go to places that most tourists don't go to. So that was, that was a, mm -hmm. another positive thing. And, and like say, the people we met, so it was, yeah, it was, it was a very good time. Yeah, that was amazing. Yeah, I love it. Um, you're insp inspiring me to do something similar. I was saying, I do think it's, it's not for everyone, uh, but maybe there's something that people can still learn from, from making such a big change. And, and I don't know if I was curious if there was like a moment for you where like that big transition moment, you know, where maybe you quit your job and you say, I'm not doing this anymore. You bought a van or, or was it more like a, a gradual change that you made? I, I'm curious how that went down. No, no. Like, like you said, it was, um, it was a feeling building up. Uh, and when I met Sue, I expressed that I wanted to travel. I didn't have a passport and I wanted to travel. Hmm. I'd come out of a long-term relationship and I was like, I'm, I'm going to travel. I've decided I'm going to travel. And I know I'm going to get a van. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah, I'm going to do that. So it, it, it was kind of like calling my own bluff. And, and, and so we, <laughs> within, I think it was a matter of like three or four weeks. And then we booked the tickets and we thought, oh, we've got to be ready by that time. So prior to that, I decided I was going to uh, save as much as I can. 
And I, I'm I'm not your your average kind of social life. I don't go out drinking. I don't smoke cigarettes. I don't gamble. So saving was was kind of not easy, but but less of a stress. Uh, but but like you say, it's not for everybody because you've got to make compromises. You got to make compromises. You got to make decisions. Um, and there there are some low moments when it's pouring down with rain or it's cold, and you're you're like in your sleeping bag and you think, why am I doing this? But <laughs> it's about being responsible and, and seeing what what's going to happen. All right, it's November. We're going towards Germany. It's going to get cold. Right. Okay. So we have a heater. I, I always make sure I have inbuilt redundancy. So we have like snow chains or snow socks. We have one or two different types of heater. We have electricity um, from what, more than one source, not just the solar panel, but from the alternator as well. And so it's being as yeah. responsible as you can and then having a safety net of a, enough money that you can just hightail it back home if you need to. But yeah, it's a compromise and it's not for everybody. Yeah, I, you have to kind of, I guess, weigh the the pros and cons and what you're sacrificing and what you're gaining. And for some people, it may not be worth it, but uh, I feel like for a lot, it may be. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's inspiring. I love these stories just about people who do something a little bit unconventional, a little bit unusual. Um, and I, I think every, I think a lot of people, not everyone, but a lot of people have that something like that inside them, don't they? Like that they really have that dream, but maybe it's yeah. not realistic. You said that you booked a date for your flight or something like that. And I, I always think that's such a good practical tip about almost like holding yourself accountable, like making sure you do something. Uh, if you have a date in the calendar that cannot be changed, then that's a really good motivator to actually take action. And I imagine there are, that can apply to many different things. Obviously for travel, just book, book a flight or something. Or, yeah. But bringing it back to English, that, that's another thing that I found is that there's a, a website where, um, I can't remember the name of it right now, I'll, I'll look it up. But there's a website where you set a pledge and a challenge for yourself. So for example, you, you set the rules, let's say for example, that I, I set the rule that I will be almost fluent within six months. Uh, and you can set the parameters that I'm gonna have a conversation with uh, a native person uh, of the language you choose. And then you, you pledge, say, uh, an amount of money, so $500 or 500 euros, that if I am not this good by this time, then the company that, that you sign up to keeps the money. And so that is a really powerful <laughs> motivator. If, if you worry that you're going to lose this money, you already put it up front. And so they have it. And you, you have to prove that you've met these milestones and you've met your goal. And I think that's incredible. So, so not just financially, you can hold yourself accountable, but you can tell your friends as well and put it on social media. Look, I'm going to do this. I'm going to learn English by this date and, and have some accountability by, by your friends and your family or, or financially. So, yeah, I think that's great to hold yourself accountable. Yeah, it's a crazy business idea to whoever started that that website. <laughs> I've heard of it as well. I don't know the name right now, though. But I, I guess also you could just do it with a friend or family member if you if you prefer not to give the money to a company. Um, yeah. And yeah. At, at least, even if you did lose that one percent chance, at least someone you know is getting the money. I guess that could be an That's alternative. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's called stick dot com, something like that. Like stick. Uh, yeah, okay. because carrot and stick is the. Uh, you know, normal motivators we use. So yeah. At the beginning, I alluded to other apps and other things we do. So it, I think now is a good time to express what other things we used and did um, kind of in our journey to be digital nomads. Um, so one of the things we tried and started first was couch surfing. I had a friend that, that had done this and I was amazed. I was like, wow, where, where are these people coming from? What, why, are they, why are they wanting to sleep on your floor? You know? And, and then I realized that the, the, the real power of, of having guests 
that are happy and positive and maybe they bring a bottle of wine maybe they bring some potatoes or some rice and you know you have a meal together share stories and and so that was the first thing for me so i signed up to couch surfer uh, and luckily enough, my wife and I had two apartments next door to each other. And so I would stay in her apartment and we'd have guests stay oh. in my apartment. Uh, we had couples, we had doctors, nurses, uh, even had a, a single female on our own. And, and I, would, I would give them free reign in my apartment. I would give them my motorbike to, to go out on uh, and tell them about the area. Mm. We also took them to uh, social engagements. So one of the things I enjoyed about Cambodia was there was um, a big expat community where on, on a Wednesday and a Sunday, they played Frisbee. And this was like competitive, not competitive Frisbee. It was ultimate Frisbee, where it wasn't about like, like golf Frisbee, where you get it in the net and you hit the chains, because that's quite popular. But it was almost like, um, like a, a match of rugby. So you got two halves, two teams, uh, and you got to throw the Frisbee to get down to the other end. And that's a lot of fun. And there were so many different nationalities, you know, just really getting along together and having fun. And so I, I took Count Shepherds to that, to, to, to meet more people uh, and connect. And that was really great experience for me. So I liked Count Shepherds a lot. So that was one of them. Another application we used was as we knew we were coming back. So I tried out a few different English teaching applications. Um, and there's obviously all the common names that come up. And I applied to a few of them. I, I've found the best ones that suited my, my abilities. And I applied to a few of them. Only a few got back. And I chose the one that best suited me and you know set up my video and, and, and filled it all out. And then it took a little while for it to, to, to get going. And I thought, why? This is the first time I'm going to get paid for doing something online, you know, on the Ethernet. You know, is it really going to pay me? Am I going to get ripped off? And so the, the, the calendar um, I had started to fill up with the trial shifts. Uh, but you don't get paid for the trial shifts. And, and my, my hourly rate was very, very low. So this, this, this trial shift filled up and filled up and filled up. And then people started coming back and I got really busy. And, and then I, after about a month, I'm like, I'm, I'm getting tired now. I, I'm doing a lot of hours. And so I had to dial it back a little bit in, in the hours I did. And then I increased my prices mm. slowly over time, but kept the loyalty for those that stayed with me because there's a, a natural progression with many online learners that three to six months then often they, they drop off or they choose another uh, another um, teacher and things like that. So that was really good for me. And I still do that. Another app and platform we used when we decided we were coming back was Trusted House Sitter. Now, I've used that one a lot as well. Excellent. Excellent. So again, it's <laughs> a way to have free accommodation. And so we before we left, like like two months before we left, we bought a calendar. We, we've still got this calendar now in, in Kamai. And we, we got this calendar and we started to fill it up. We had video chats with people. We, we um, put on some references and photos of, of our experience. And we just started filling up the calendar. Uh, so that was brilliant. We wouldn't have to worry about accommodation. So that, that's like two birds with one stone. Uh, we also checked that there's uh, fairly good Wi-Fi. We, we try and choose nice places. Uh, and then a few months later, as we come back, we found another site called Rover. Now, Rover is very much like Trusted House Sitter. Well, Trusted House Sitter, you, like Couch Surfer, you pay a little bit to get verified and for the administration, and they're running in a platform. Now, we did this with Trusted House Sitter, and so it gives you a little bit of peace of mind that there's insurance and a vet that you can ring up and things like this. Now, mm -hmm. with Rover, um, they pay us. So we, we started off looking at um, staying with people and putting up our profile and hoping people will contact us. Now we have this experience with Trusted House Sitter. We, we, we put up some photos and then after we were accepted, we added a few more photos with our reviews from Trusted House Sitter at, at the back of the list of the photos. 
so people could see that um, we were we were legitimately you know human beings that are going to turn up and and um, you know and, and be responsible. So we put those sorts. Of, so now we try to fill up the calendar going forward with rover and paid customers. We also dropped our price down to make ourselves very competitive. Because for us, I'd rather get paid, say, I don't know, £10 a night to look after a dog and, and still have somewhere to sleep and stay that's warm than, than having mm -hmm. nowhere and being charged £30, £40, £50 a night to look after a dog. So, so now we're moving a, uh, a lot more onto Rover. So that helps us stay afloat in this country. Because as you know, in the UK, things are a lot more expensive. Teaching English in Cambodia and Vietnam is, is okay because the, the lifestyle you can lead can be very cheap or you can spend a lot of money. So moving over to, to the UK, we realized we had to bring in some more money. And so we're looking at other aspects as well. So that's kind of the apps that I've used. Um, and one other app was buymeacoffee.com. So those mm -hmm. students or, or, or people that were able to help, if they wanted to give us a donation without feeling they've got to subscribe to, to Patreon or other um, platforms, they could just buy a coffee for $3. There's other things on there about me, another profile about uh, Sue and I, um, and other things for sale. So, so that was also another thing that, that helps a little bit without being too garish and, and, you know, impolite. It, it's very casual to say, if you want to buy me a coffee, then that's fine. People can also subscribe yeah. and buy your coffee every month if they wish. So that, that again is like, is that another good platform we use? So that's kind of where we are now and, and a bit up to date. Our next phase, if you don't mind me saying, our next phase now is we're saving up and, and hoping to get a narrow boat. So it's, it's like being living oh. in a van, but in a narrow boat, it's much less of a taboo. You know, it's much more accepted. It's fun. It's friendly um, and, and a little less taboo and, and, and frowned upon um, living in a boat. And, and the canal networks are massive. You, you can travel around for years and not get everywhere. And if you have what mm -hmm. they call a constant cruising license, you move on every two weeks. You, you must move on every two weeks, which makes it a much cheaper endeavor to keep moving every two weeks. So yeah, that, that's the next stage yeah. we're looking at in the future, hopefully end of next year. So. Wow, that, that's exciting. I, I guess that seems to me like a very British thing, doesn't it? I, I, I haven't, I haven't, I'm, I'm sure there's some European countries that do that, but it's that kind of you know, sailing down the canal in your little, well, quite long boat, not little boat. Um, yeah, kind of a relaxing lifestyle. That, that's interesting. I, I wanted to respond to some of the apps that you you mentioned, like uh, couch surfing. I, I've used that one so much. I use it here as well in Thailand. It's a great way to meet people, even just like meet up just for a day. Um, I used it in the US. I, I was sleeping in someone on someone's sofa. Um, because accommodation is super expensive in the US. Mm. But yeah, it's great. it's great. I mean, one of the big benefits of that I found was the locals take you to places that you would never see yourself. Um, that's right. Just places that they like that a tourist wouldn't know about. So that, that's, that's always nice. Yeah, um, yeah. You mentioned house sitting, which if, if people don't know or haven't worked out yet, it's, it's like babysitting, isn't it? It's like looking after someone's house while they're on holiday, um, yeah, usually yeah. involving pets, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Some I... places often mm. uh, have more than just pets. They may have chickens or horses. So that, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. lots of options. That's a bit out of my comfort zone. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I've done so many now, of like looking after dogs and cats. Um, and quite often, it's, it's not much you have to do. It's like feed them once or twice a day or two or three yeah, times a day. yeah. And How then easy you is that? the area. Yeah, I, I, I love that, what I can do. And honestly, I, I'm sure you can relate to this. The happiest times in my life have always been when I've been, I've been uh, house sitting. I've got no house, no apartment to rent, no expenses. I just feel so free. And all of my possessions yeah. are kind of on my back. Uh, I, yeah. I love that feeling of freedom. I'm I sure agree. you can I agree. relate to that too. Yeah. <laughs> 
kind of minimizing your life and 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 shedding a lot of that material consumerism that that we collect it's very therapeutic getting rid of so much stuff you kept and you think why why did i buy this what other apps have you tried i mean when it comes to this topic of like travel and digital nomad and stuff like that uh i don't know i'm kind of not sure what your uh what your approach is to learning languages when you're moving around so much uh but i've used apps like hello talk a little bit um i had more success in the past but hello talk is like a language exchange app um it has one feature where you can meet people in your nearby area so i've used that a lot yeah. to just meet people for coffee and and chat with people um it doesn't i suppose it's not kind of practically helping the you, you travel when you move but it does help you in the sense that it you know, you build connections, you feel less lonely, and of, of course, you practice your your language skills as well. So, so that's oh. always fun. Um, I can't think of any more right now, though, to be honest. Okay, I I haven't used a lot of language apps. I I'm a little bit more um, analog and, and and physical. So mm -hmm. I always recommend uh, to all my students, and this is what I do: is that I always have a small notebook, you know, that I keep in my pocket. What I generally do is write down a, a good, interesting word and then some collocations to go with it. And I make it into a sentence at the end. So I, I'm able to increase my vocabulary mm. and still keep that, that, those, those words that you know in, in the back there, in those, that long-term memory, and bring it to more active memory, bring it forward just by going through my book. And, and as you know, necessity is the uh, the mother of all invention so necessity when you're at a restaurant or when you've got to do your laundry you you have to ask and you have to learn so you write it down i might need this later you know it's survival isn't it so i i'm very much mm -hmm. old school when it comes to learning um languages i really like the book and in, like like you say connecting with people i, I find that so so therapeutic and, and warming and, and helps my learning yeah i i think i mean honestly whether it is analog or digital um ha having that little kind of sheet that paper where you can write down these useful phrases is something that i find really useful anyway uh, i'm sure a lot of people would yeah yeah perhaps for my listeners you could tell people more about where they can find you about the podcast and things like that as well, just so people can learn Thank more. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we'll plug it in now. Um, English Podcast with Paul. That, that's the podcast on YouTube. Um, and then there's also a website that, that's fledgling. So so please be gentle with me. It, it's uh, still getting new. And then there's Second Class Hobos, more for the digital and nomadic side and, and more personal about Sue and I. So, so that's it. Uh, also, we're on Instagram as Second Class Hobos. Uh, and I think I've got um, a Facebook page that I'm neglecting. I'm so sorry. I'm neglecting my Facebook page. Again, mm -hmm. English Podcast with Paul on Facebook. So, yeah, that's, that's all my socials. Thank you very much. Thank you. Amazing. I, I will link them all, but thank you for your time. I really enjoyed the chat. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe we can catch up again in, uh, in six months and, and do another video, find out where, uh, where things have moved forward. All right, that'd be great. I'm sure it'll be totally different. We'll be in different countries. You'll be on your boat maybe somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You have been listening to the Level Up English podcast. If you would like to leave a question to be answered on a future episode, then please go to levelupenglish.school forward slash podcast that's levelupenglish.school slash podcast and i'll answer your question on a future episode thanks for listening <laughs>